Hello everyone, welcome to Living Coast in your living room. My name is Ashley, one of the educators here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. Now during this time we are close, but we are still caring for all of our animals. And so we are doing our best to bring to you all kinds of different educational videos for you to get a chance to learn about nature and all the wonderful things within. Be sure to check out our page every day, Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. for our newest video as we share with you all of our different opportunities for you to learn about nature. Now the Living Coast is a small nonprofit zoo and aquarium located in Chula Vista. We are uniquely situated on the San Diego Bay National Wildlife Refuge. One of the perks of being on this wildlife refuge is we have beautiful trails to be able to go outside and take hikes in, and that's exactly what we're gonna get a chance to do today. Previously on Living Coast in your living room, we went hiking down Main Trail and then down the Coyote Trail, which took us out here to the settling pond in the bird blind area. So today we're gonna continue hiking through this area where you can get a chance to see our beautiful settling pond and ocean views. And we're actually gonna continue down the trail. So I'm gonna make a right hand turn so that you guys can get a chance to see what it looks like out here. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like on our map here. So just like previously, whenever you go out hiking, it is very important to use your map and orient yourself to make sure you know where you're going. Now we are roughly right over here at this junction point right here, right where Coyote Trail turns into the trail that goes out to the bird blind. We're gonna continue up this trail here and up and around over to this bay overlook area. Now to orient this map so that it matches, cause up ahead here, this is the trail we're gonna take. And this is the trail I came from. So to orient my map properly, I would actually need to turn it this way so that it matches, sorry, my shade's getting in the way, <laughs> so that it matches the actual landscape of the ground. So this is how you're going to orient your map so that you can read your map properly and know which direction you are going to go. We're gonna be heading out towards the water. So we're gonna continue down that trail and see what we can see. Now there hasn't been anybody out here on the wildlife refuge due to the closure. So we have an opportunity to get a chance to see lots of different things. However, it is a very warm day out today. So the chances are also kind of slim as well. Now, there are some lizards on the sides of the trails. Oh, and a rabbit. Let's see if we can get a nice view of that rabbit. Do you see that rabbit? Ra oh, too far, sorry. Do you see his little cottontail? So that is a desert cottontail. He did just run away, but we did have that opportunity to view that desert cottontail species. We have been seeing a lot of younger bunnies running around during this time. So it is spring. We are starting to see a lot of those babies emerge and start running around. We've been seeing a lot of young bunnies, a lot of young squirrels. And recently we've actually been seeing a lot of snakes on our property as well. So as we're walking through here, I'm also keeping my eye out for any potential snakes. Now here we've actually been able to see both king snakes and rattlesnakes around, which is great. That means our snake populations are doing well. We want to make sure that our snake populations are doing well because they are very important to our local ecosystem. Now, previously when we went on our hike, a lot of these plants were bright green with yellow on them. They don't really look like that anymore, do they? Well, now it is getting too warm out and the flowers have all started to drop off. So these flowers here with the super crunchy dried up look, that's actually gonna be a non-native species and that's why it looks so crispy and dried up. You can see how the leaves here are also super crispy. But then tucked in between that, do you see these green leaves here? That's that California sunflower bush that we talked about on our first hike as well. And that is a native. So our native plants and those non-native plants are going to have different adaptations that help them to survive. While our natives are adapted to surviving here during those warm seasons without any water, the non-natives are not. And they often are the ones that cripple and dry up like that. And then when you step on them, they make that crunching sound. So that's one of the ways you can tell these 
natives from non-natives is just by looking at them during the summer. And if they look kind of crispy and crunchy, it's probably not native. Giving you a chance to view our lovely native plant mixture with some of these non-natives. Due to our heavy rains we had this year, we do have a surplus of non-natives that have been able to outcompete some of our native plant species out here. Now we would love for all these non-natives to not be here, but unfortunately, as we are the end point of the watershed, a lot of different seeds come with the waters. As they work their way down to the ocean, a lot of that stuff gets brought down here. All right, so up ahead, we do have some beautiful birds that just stopped on our salt bushes and they're flying by. Some different house finches and sparrows. Let's see if we can get a nice up close view of these. We have a lot of different birds that live out here on the refuge that specialize in eating insects, specifically flying insects. So if you can get an up close look at some of these birds if they ever come back because they <laughs> flew away so fast, you would actually be able to see their beak is designed to be able to catch those bugs while they're flying through the air. Now right over here on this side, this is going to be part of that upland habitat right before it changes drastically to the beach habitat. So you're starting to see kind of the plant life change from that shrub bush-like environment to more sandy and kind of dune-like environment. Now over here on this side of our trailhead, we have this overlook area, which gives you the opportunity to sit and relax and enjoy some of these beautiful ocean views. Now here you can see it is actually low tide, which means out on these rocks and in this beach area, there are going to be all kinds of different food sources available for the different shorebirds. So those rocks are actually exposed when low tide comes through. And then when the tide comes back up, all those rocks get covered again. During this time, it reveals all kinds of different crabs, marine worms, and snails that give the shorebirds the opportunity to be able to feed. So previously we went out over to our bird blind, which you can now see straight across. That's where we went and did our birding 101 lesson where you got a chance to learn about birds. And you see in between the two, there's actually that settling pond and then more of that kind of more dune-like habitat. This transitionary period where the habitats are changing between those two types. And then as we pan back around, you can see all those lovely flowers that are growing in the upland habitat. And finally coming back to our beautiful oceanic views. Now some of the things that we need to talk about for our hiking experience today is that whenever you go out, you do want to make sure you know where you're going. As we talked about with our maps, we want to make sure we use our maps appropriately so that we can make sure we are not getting lost and we are doing our best to protect ourselves. Previously, we've talked about how it is important to make sure you bring your cell phone with you or your radio, whatever way you can get in contact with people and make sure that someone knows where you are going. Now, it is ideal to not go hiking by yourself, but sometimes it is necessary as you just need to get away, get that natural break from everything else. But it is also important to make sure you are wearing the correct attire. Now, I'm wearing my hiking shoes today and a nice pair of shorts so that I can have cool access to my body. But it's also important to dress in layers so if you're going out for a longer hike you want to make sure you bring layers just in case it becomes rapidly cold now another important thing is whenever you go hiking you do want to make sure that you are leaving everything where it is now we often talk about how staying on the trail is important and picking up after ourselves is important but it's also really important that we do our part to leave all the natural items in nature 
Sometimes we want to take home those beautiful rocks or shells or flowers, but it's really important that we do our part to leave everything where it is. Here on this wildlife refuge, since it is a protected space by U.S. Fish and Wildlife, everything you see around me is protected. That means that whenever people come to visit, we're not taking anything off of the refuge land space. But that doesn't mean it's not affected by humans. We often host beach cleanups and different cleanup events. And clearly, as you guys saw all those different invasive plants around here, we have to do plant restoration as well. So it does take a village to be able to care for our natural environment. And we hope that this video has hope, hopefully inspired you to be able to want to care for our environment and do your part as well. Thanks for joining us here today on Living Coast in Your Living Room. And we'll see you next time.